Were you a McDonald's or Burger King family? McDonald's. Yeah, same. You know what? Are we filming? No, okay. but we should be. <laughs> yeah. I'm rolling. Oh, we're. Um, Let me turn my phone off. So I, I was a Whataburger kid. Okay, I don't. You're Texas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what water. I remember going to Texas. It's with, not water, but I did the same thing. It's what is it? What a burger. What a burger. What a burger. Not water burger, but I did the same thing as a kid. I was like, we're going to water burger. And people were like, the secret kids. ingredients, water. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that I want this. Burger. It's a moist patty. Gross. That'll be the name of this episode <laughs> well, Moist Patty. When I, <laughs> that's well, that was my name on Grinder for years before I retired Grinder. By the way, in Italy, when they make jokes about Grinders, Grinder. <gasps> Grinder, it's so funny. But um, when I we, we were, grew up in Chicago and they had Culver's and they had Butter Burgers. Sick. It, I know the name, the name Butter and and in, in, I want Butter, but I don't want the name in, in the name. Yeah, it's, too it's much. like Crystal, Crystal Burger. Oh, I thought you meant like the name Crystal. Like that's what it, it's like. Crystal Burgers. But and if like, your it's name like in is the Crystal, South. it you are you are just that woman. Yeah, but it's also like kind of methy. So I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, there's Meth a reason why it's, yeah, it's, that's why it's like only in the South, because it's like, it's a crystal burger. It's I know that tiny little Sheets burger. is a thing. People go to Sheets. There's a Whataburger. There's, I never really liked In-N-Out Burger. I hate it. Oh, I prefer Shake Shack. I'm not going to sit in a line for like five days. And the bun's not, the bun should have some moisture. Congratulations, the bun's you put dry. Thousand Island on a fucking sandwich. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> that's a secret sauce, is it? We know. It's enough with the secret sauce. By the way, um, the uh, driver's dines and di whatever the hell it's called with um, Guy Fieri, who is at this point in a full REM sleep doing that show. Yeah. Every single place you go to, because they're just scraping the bottom of the barrel. You know, it's like, there's our secret <laughs> sauce. And it's just like Cool Whip. And you're like, yeah. we got to. They're just finding TikTok recipes. Like, who knew watermelon and it's mustard go together? TikTok recipes. There's a new trend. Mm -hmm. White women making pasta. And it's the same fucking pasta every time they like some blonde bitch who's like let me show you that meal that he's gonna fucking love and then they show like a, a skillet that they've never touched and it's just like olive oil Garlic, garlic and then they put tomato paste and then they put cream and then they mix it and they put some kind of cheese like mozzarella and then like a big fun fusilli and then it's just her barely getting it to her <laughs> lips so I don't know if she's eaten it. I don't know if she's seen it. I don't think she's even smelled it. She did not cook it. But it is the new trend. It's the and it's the same over and over. And again, some blonde woman. I don't know if they're in a factory like the Sentinels. Probably. Yes. And they're just yeah, like Stepford wives. Like yes. they're just asleep and they and they wake up and they're in this factory and it's like have you have you have you have you he's got he's got he's got he's got you know it just it's so crazy to me because get ready you, with me get ready go, with me get ready with me I don't want to get ready with I you I don't want to get I ready with you. I don't want to get ready with me. I don't want to get, get ready with you. I don't want to get ready. I do want to get ready with like a hot guy who's like, first of all, what was that trend of guys like running out like in their underwear and then they're in their pants and then they're in their toothbrush? Have you seen oh, this? Oh, the Montana boys? This is, is that, this like, because uh, my thing right now is like the cowboys who are like straight, but like shirtless. And they, and they do, they sing like some fucking awful Luke Combs song song and they're just like, and then they like they switch. This move. Can you this. imagine ever doing this? Could you confidently? imagine? <laughs> imagine meeting like say you're on a date. Say you're like a a, a a beautiful young girl on the town, and you've matched this guy on some. And app. I have a recipe for him. <laughs> <laughs> She's just made pasta, and then you meet the guy, and he's like, "Ooh, oh. I was like, are you gonna murder me? Yes. Yeah. If that's I, not a red flag, ladies, if you're like, if a guy comes up to you like this. Just it's all it's it's a step away from Mr. Burns, but uh, yes, yeah, Smithers. Which, by the way, your co-host sounds like Mr. Bo um, Mr. Burns. No, he sounds like Smithers. Smithers. He Nick Smith looks like Mr. Burns <laughs> yes. and sounds like Smithers. So what he's the two of them combined. <laughs> That's exactly huh? <laughs> he We play Fortnite with each other, and he doesn't say, "Hey, Nick." Instead of going, "Yeah," he goes, "Ha," huh? and then I go. Uh -huh. I'm like, you're so annoying. So now he goes, beg your pardon. No, not beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. And he's phased by nothing. Our podcast, which is called I Never Liked You. Yeah. Um, he's phased by all of our followers have fully said Nick is autistic. He has <laughs> autism. Nick, we see you. Thank you for being like, not advocate. questioning. Advocate. And, Nick's, and Nick, who's dressed like a haunted Victorian doll. He is a haunted Victorian doll. Yes. I think that's why I like him. Yeah. I and love he, a spooky porcelain. He didn't understand. We did a uh, live show and we were talking... Well, the topic was zombie apocalypse and he 
didn't grasp the concept of what that meant. He thought there was one zombie. He didn't realize that everyone turns into zombies. So I said, I said, I would bear down. Like, what would you do? I would bear down. Like, I would bolt my doors. He goes, you wouldn't leave the city? I said, how am I going to leave? How are you going to leave? Planes, trains, automobiles? How do you think? I said, you think LaGuardia's running right. when there's a zombie apocalypse? Well, people have to work. I said, you're not, you're, you don't get it. He goes, I'm not grasping the concept. You know what he is? First one to die. Oh, first one first to die. First one to die. You can't, if you've seen any zombie movie, you know that the airport and any like transportation area Hub. is going to be like, that's where they come in and start biting. Well, I realize that he's very scared of scary movies, and oh. that's why he doesn't know what a zombie apocalypse is because he's never seen a zombie movie. So he has, he thinks there's one zombie. Is he gay? A, a f Wow. I mean, he looks like B. Arthur's season three of The Golden Girls. I was going to say four, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he might be more four. Yeah. Not quite five, where it would start. It, she was almost like a. She was almost like a, a, a card playing character, yeah. like the queen or jack of all trades. Like you could smell gardenia through the screen. <laughs> yes, yes. My favorite B. Arthur quote in The Golden Girls, Blanche, I'm borrowing your earrings. I have a date tonight with a man. No, Rose, a Venus flytrap. I mean, A+. plus. A plus. A plus. A plus. A Venus oh. flytrap. Some <laughs> wrote that up, sent the script in, B said it. My legendary. God. Well, let me introduce you because oh, we sure. have just been going off. Um, welcome to the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale. Today, we have a very special guest in town. Uh, you've seen him all over the intranet. Uh, he that's is, about it. Those are my credits. Those, that's it. The credits that everyone and their mother has. I mean, you're everywhere. <laughs> you're everywhere. You're on tour. You're touring the world. I, I, I'm fully... Letting everyone know, fully jet lagged. Yeah, I don't know what time it is. I don't know where I am. Perfect. I'm confused. <laughs> We've got them, <laughs> boys. It's, it's that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get, I, those oh. two deserve each other. The guy doing this and the and girl the not girl. cooking her pasta. Yeah. Go. Take them all. Go Take home. them all. You've but, seen him. You love him. Please make some noise. Mateo Lane. Mateo Lane officially in the studio. Welcome. I made it. I'm here in LA. I did it. I know. When's the last time you were here? Mm. I don't. Well, I don't know. Neither do I. A long time I live ago. here, and I don't remember. I, I um, maybe a year ago when I did the Ace Hotel Theater. That might, it might yeah. a very long time ago. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Thank the you. The weather's gorgeous. The weather's always gorgeous, but there is that feeling of when you leave Europe. I little, I left Madrid. Yes. And I landed in L.A. And that feeling when you get into LAX of like. Not full on suicide, but like they start Close. to percolate. I mean, you're thinking, there's I, thoughts. It, you land, first dark of all, I'm excitedness. Like, it's dark. As mm -hmm. my friend Trina Windsor would say, she goes, it's dark energy. So I. <laughs> In the airport. Which it is. I mean, for <laughs> LAX, this is like one of the largest, most famous cities on the face of the planet. And this airport was designed by who? Oh, a blind person. Literally. Yeah. And my grandfather's blind. He could do a better job designing it. You land, and if then. If I had a Braille airport, sure. Oh, I, he has a Braille yeah. typewriter. Let's exactly. Get, we should go on Shark Tank. Yeah. Oh. Just drag my grandpa in there. No, hey, no. Hey, sharks, tell. have we got an idea for you? <laughs> First of all, I want to talk to you about your product. This is Barbara Corcoran. Barbara Corcoran, who's also Lady Lane Fairchild. <laughs> totally. Giving you Mr. Rogers realness. Oh. Uh, 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 land of make-believe <laughs> realness. I gotta be honest, I was always uncomfortable in the land of make-believe. We all were. And it was just, terrifying. It was terrifying. terrifying. I was like, who are these grown people in this weird puppet world and talking to an owl in a clock? Yeah, and I didn't like the king. Oh, 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 oh. But anyways, I land. we land. It's a 13-hour flight. Then we land. And... Um, it, we we were stuck on the tarmac for an hour and a half. Then you get there and you go through customs. I do have global entry, so I was like, goodbye. Yes, yeah, and then, all of you peasants in oh, hell. My, I mean, monsters. And then <laughs> you go on that bus. And the indignity to take a bus. I've already come from Spain. Yeah. I've traveled over the Atlantic Ocean. And now I have to get on this bus. And the bus driver is just... When I landed in Dublin... And I had to take the bus. I get at the airport and I go wait the bus. And the guy, I'm expecting LAX, JFK, Heathrow, some sort of rude, big city asshole. Yeah. And I get there and he goes, how many are there of you? I go, just one. Well, one's still a party. We'll have a good time. Oh, I go, God. Shut I up, Alan Cumming. No, my I God. I fell in love immediately <laughs> with Dublin. Ireland, I love you. I'm coming back. <laughs> I was in Ireland. We're going to make the best of this trip we are. Uh, well, better than get yourself in the bike. You know, I, I just, I can't. So, but I, I just came back. I did Manchester, Dublin, Rome, uh, Cologne, uh, Berlin, and Madrid. And how were they? 
They were all fantastic. Yeah. Actually. They were really, really, really Did great. you go by yourself? No, I have my friend Francesco DiCarlo, who's an Italian comic, open for me. Perfect. And so we did the whole Europe tour together, just smoking and gossiping in Italian. On the bus. On the just bus. smoking on the bus. <laughs> on the bus. God. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love Rome. I love all of that. I've, I, I, you go all the time. I always feel like every time I see you, you're like, and I'm back. I am. I go you probably like it. four times a year. I'm going back next month because my only vacation is, is the month of June. So I'm going to go back for June. And How long are you going to stay there? Like three weeks. Or something like that. I'm going to go to Sicily and, you know. I was God, such- live my best. Yeah. Sicilian yes. life. Yes. Oh. I remember when I went to Rome, the big, the, the, I mean, just. Texas trash here. Like yeah. I was like, they were like, you can drink from the fountains. <laughs> Any can. fountain, just put a cup in there and drink it. You so can. I was that person like, oh, <laughs> oh, any any water fixture? Oh yeah, it's built on an aqueduct. I'm like, ah, oh, just drinking all the water. It is that they, they you'll see businessmen walking and they're sweating and smoking and they walk up and they, they have a, like the way they hit the spigot is mm-hmm. like, it's sport, like they know how to, they just, the Romans live in a city where it like, it feels organic to them. Yeah. And the rest of Europe, it's gorgeous, but I mean, it, it's there is a very magical quality to Rome specifically. I mean, even Madrid, which is like a very cousin city of Italy, like uh, of Rome, or just Spain in general, is very. The, they have it's a lot just of together. Sexy. Oh, the men are just it's just it's sexy, unbelievable. But Rome, ha- we land in Rome, and we're like, wow, it really is just like a very magical city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I re I started rewatching um, Spartacus on Stars. I never saw it. What? No. Are you kidding me? Uh, it, Do you want full frontal nudity? I can go on someone's OnlyFans or Twitter. No, but this has like dialogue. Oh yeah. <laughs> have you ever tried like like have you ever in your entire life tried to get into like the sort of when they when they're doing role play or dialogue in porn? You're like, fine, I'm going to suspend all belief and let's just see, you know, if they're in the locker what or is whatever. This relationship? And it just dies on the vine. Yeah. I mean, just the second they're in there, it's like coach and like, I don't know, whatever. And there's just like, I know I'm out. I just when you hear the gay voice. Well, I have the gayest voice in the face of the planet. Do I have gay voice? Girl. I know. <laughs> I've never asked. But you I don't can... need to ask. I know. You can see. Do you have gay voice? Look at you. <laughs> what is this? I do you know Bob and Monet and their podcast were arguing over whose voice was gayer, Bob or Monet. I and mean, it's got uh, who's this? It hold on. It's Monet's. Monet. But they said, okay, Monet's like six out of ten, but just through me and said, I mean, if Mateo's a ten. I don't and think, I'm like, <clears throat> I mean, I know. Just I, outed you on their yeah, podcast. And I have gay voice. I don't mind it. I like my voice. I'm, I'm in the Chicago accents a lot, but the, yeah. the gay voice thing's fine with me. But I'm like, gayer, gayer than Nick. But what is mine? What does mine sound like? You and I both sound like, uh, we're like a version of Jiminy Glick because our voices go <laughs> high and then they go low. So we are, I mean, we really, when what, I, what, what? what, what <laughs> You when did I react, like, oh, commercial boy. <laughs> you know, I mean, when I react, it's for like, huh? What? Like it's very that. Yeah. And then when I talk to my dog, by the way, Frida is here. She's being a good girl. When I I realize that now I have gay dog dad voice. Oh. And when I talk to her, it's alarming because they'll be like, <laughs> Is she gonna go outside? Is she wanna go like that? I say that and talk like that in public. I'm being a good girl. Like what? What? Well, it's also you're talking to them, Look, but for now them. She's like, <laughs> she's like, you know what's what I mean? up? <laughs> you, you're talking to them, but for them. That's yeah. the weird thing about dogs. I I'm obsessed with pit bulls, uh-huh. and I when I uh, was the in, dog, not the artist. The dog, the dog. Imagine. Could you imagine? I was like, oh, I love these guys <laughs> on tour. Do you want to hear a fun pit bull story? Please. And I'll let you finish real quick. But like, I went on the View. I years ago, I went on the View. In the audience, a friend of mine was like, "Oh my god, we're gonna watch the View." And um, we get, we're in the view, Joey Behar's there, she comes, talks to us, and then they're like, hey, we need everyone to come to the front of the stage. We had to get out of the seats and go to the front of the stage because Pitbull was performing. At 11 a.m.? Yeah. And I said no. And they're like, sir, you need to get on. And I'm like, no, I don't. I, I go, here's, this is why... I am who I am. I was like, I am not going to be on national television at The View 
pretending I enjoy Pitbull. I, I, that is like. Producers were like, yeah, he's not, he, he's not going on the floor. Secret service. Yeah. Get this. I went to the Oprah show once and my friend Pat actually has a great story about the Oprah show. He goes, they, they treated us like shit. Yeah. He's like, they brought us in there and then they had like, you know, team captains because they, they literally prod you. They're like, when Oprah comes out, you do what? Because they're like, if you don't, we will, your family will be gone by yeah. the time you're done with this. And then Oprah comes out and he said, the woman next to him, literally, it, he goes, it was as if she was reaching out with her hands, being held on by her ankles from her mother <laughs> to try and touch Oprah, like to be healed by her. He's like, but you could just see, like, I'm 6'4", and the rest of the audience was down here, so you, you can see the videos of, like, me just clapping, like, I don't want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Give me a honey baked ham and send me home. God, I totally... Uh, well, let's get into some stories. Okay. I have some really fun gay... Wonderful stories. Did you? Okay, you're big, big Disney person. I mean, I like. Um, let me preface this. You like villains. I like. I like the artist Mark Davis. Yes, who created Maleficent and a lot of the female figures of Disney was a big inspiration for me. I am not a Disney. You're person. not a Disney. Adult. You have to make it super specific. I've never been to Disney World or Disneyland. Really? Well, like we didn't have money growing up, so that's. And then now I'm like thirty. I'm gonna be thirty eight soon. I'm like I can't. What am I gonna go to Disney World now with a mustache? <laughs> Under no circumstances. I'll go with you. They're like, so, look, it's the dad from Inside Out. I. <laughs> Would love that, but I don't want to be around Kit. That's the whole thing. Yeah, but I would, I would go because I would, I'd be more interested though to see like Disney artifacts of drawings and sure, stuff. That's sure. what I actually care about. <clears throat> but Disney as of itself, I don't really. I'm not like enamored by. I'm not putting on mouse ears and going to Disney World with a fanny on a pack. Tuesday, yeah, on a Tuesday, it's too much. It's a lot. But I love Mark Davis. He's my favorite artist of all time. But I mean, it's all that to say. Okay, so Disney. So here is um, Disney. I don't know why Tommy Lauren's on here. Is she? Is she? It, it was just the video that played. She did the video. Okay, of course, because she has to. She got a new face, by the way. Uh, she so, did get a new face. Yeah. So Disney has now marked Tinkerbell and Captain Hook as problematic stereotypes. Well, how? How is it? Tell me the living mm -hmm. fairy you know mm -hmm. that is upset <laughs> by the representation of Tinkerbell. How is it a stereotype? Is it wow. about feminism? Like, like she's sort of like subservient to Peter Pan, who's also gay as a picnic basket. Yeah, but also Captain Hook. Like, but also on. let me just say this: she really wanted to fuck Peter Pan. I was like, what are you gonna do? Sit on his thumb? Like, what are you gonna do? You are not the compatible for each other. Well, can't remember when Julia Roberts became like full life size. I didn't realize how bad she was in that so movie terrible. until I was an adult and saw Rufio. So I still think Rufio is the hottest person on the face of the planet. You cannot steer me wrong, but. I didn't realize how bad she was. Yeah. She's like, Peter, do you like me now? It's like, oh, that wig. <laughs> the wig was. The wig. She had no front, back, or side. And <laughs> she also, you could tell, like, they just, like, built, like, a set for her to kind of react to things. But she had, she must have just gotten off of, um... Uh, Steel Magnolias because she was sort of rehearsing like, remember when she died? She was like, spaghetti! And then she fell. Oh, on Halloween. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're going to be doing this a lot because no, we're gay and fine. we love no, each other. No, I was just thinking of Steel Magnolias and like... And she can't. She can walk and I can't. I can walk all the way across from Texas and, I, I, and my daughter can't. She never could. Hit her! <laughs> <laughs> we so, could do it into all the quotes. Oh, what? Uh, the movie? Your veins. Uh, yeah. Oh, what, if you don't have something nice to say, sit by me. Like, I mean, my God, if I'm not Weeza incarnate, I don't know what is. Okay, so Disney recently looked through its library of content in search of characters who might ooze offensive stereotypes. Disney, heads up. <clears throat> There's more for you to do. Yeah. You need to start writing original scripts than Thank going you. back to scripts written in 1952, seeing as them being problematic. Guess what? Things in 1993, such as Jungle to Jungle, that's problematic. Go back and apologize for that. Jungle to Jungle? Which one was that? When Tim Allen, oh, yeah. whose adopted oh, son, right. was in the jungle. <clears throat> yeah. Who is that? That's What's his name? It is Nicole Kidman. <laughs> we come to this jungle for magic. <laughs> when I, can I tell you, this is something that only queer people will understand. Okay. That straight people just will never grasp, no matter how you explain to them, they won't grasp it. I was in a theater opening night for Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse Madness, whatever. And obviously a lot of gays there because mm -hmm. Wanda was in the movie. 
and it sold out. And that commercial came on. It got from the homosexuals in the audience Thunderous. a standing ovation. Thunderous. And the confusion. Mm -hmm. Wait, first of all, when she walked out, it got an applause. Oh, when the heel touches the puddle, <laughs> I'm wet. Like this I'm the puddle. Splice brings us. I mean, the way she's sitting in front of the the light. Yeah. And so like her head is blocking the 50 movies that she's watching. Oh, Not she's watching The Lost World for the first time. <laughs> she's watching Ali Starstruck. But where there's a standing ovation and straight people literally like, what is happening right yeah. now? Oh, mm -hmm. reciting it? Like it's my favorite thing from SNL in the last couple of years is the the sketch where they poke fun at the Nicole Kidman AMC. Oh, I didn't see it. I should oh, watch it. Oh my God. It. She full on like suspends, storm, lightning. It's <laughs> incredible. Wind. It's incredible. You know they're doing a sequel. Nicole's they already doing another did one. it. Is it out? Yes. It's not as good, is it? They doesn't have, have the repressed magic. repressed her. <laughs> they have cut it. They've cut it. There's like four or five of them now and she's like just walking up the AMC in Burbank just like your movie's about to start. Like, it's no, sad. I know. Nicole, I want you to walk and be like, this place brings me joy, light, yeah. darkness, and here's my letter of... I mean, I, I want the drama. But we okay. all want the drama. But back to back to Disney. Right. Here we go. So, according to the New York Times, Disney found both Tinkerbell and Captain Hook from the 1953 movie Peter Pan as problematic and labeled them as such in a message to senior leaders. That's right. Tinkerbell and Captain Hook are now offensive. Disney says it marked Tinkerbell for caution because she is body conscious. Oh, where she like sort of checks out her hips in the mirror. God forbid a woman is looking at her body and jealous of Peter Pan's attention. Well, why is Captain Hook offensive? Well, as for Captain Hook, Disney fears that he could expose the audience to <gasps> discrimination or prejudice against individuals with disabilities because he is a villain. But I'm so, but uh, okay, maybe I'm wrong here. No. But villains are supposed to be problematic and offensive. Correct. Yeah, they're villains. Ursula the Sea, which is she's problematic too. Disney for his view to find Ursula's dark complexion racist and flamboyant mannerisms queer coded. Well, uh, she was based after Divine. Exactly. She's not a human. But also, why is this a problem? Well, God forbid she's queer coded. She's a fucking purple octopus in the ocean. What else do you want? <laughs> my my octopus witches are not purple. <laughs> I like them white and Christian. That's that's the proper. That's how my witches of the under ocean need to be. <laughs> I ain't never seen no purple octopus witch. Canceled. Kids, we're homeschooling you. These are people. These are real what people. What Disney movie doesn't have something problematic, though? That's what I want to know. I'm sorry. Like, if Male what? Uh, well, Maleficent, you, I mean, you can't. The I bitch mean, brings her own ravens. She also, if you think about Maleficent, she wasn't invited to a party. And cursed the world. She was like, oh, you'd invite me to this party? <gasps> well, your kid, by the way, I just want to get into this because that is my favorite movie. <clears throat> Maleficent is not the problem in that movie. The fairies are. And let me explain to you why. Maleficent goes when she's 16, mm -hmm. she's going to prick her finger and she's going to die. So Meriwether, the blue fairy, goes, okay, I'm going to change it so she just falls asleep. Then Flora and Fauna talk about it, and they go, why don't we hide her? In the woods. In the woods and raise her. So they take her away from her parents, convincing her we're taking 16 years of your child away from you to ensure her safety. And what happens? Pricks her finger. And so what do the fairies do? They say, well, we can't get caught. Make everyone go to sleep. Uh -huh. So they get everyone to go to sleep and then they go and rescue Prince Philip just because they need their asses saved for the princess. And then at the end, they're like, <laughs> everything's fine. So they are the problem. They covered up an almost murder. So there you go, Disney. The problem is not Tinkerbell. It's Meriwether, Flora, and, and fauna. fauna. Hashtag not my fairies. <laughs> <laughs> not my fairies. I, I, what's the, who, who's talking to Disney and them saying that they're, I mean, this seems very not Tommy Lauren, credible. Like, girl, I get a trust, hobby. I wouldn't trust her with a plant. No, get a hobby. Like, you got a new face. Girl, stop <laughs> it. Oh, I, I, so it's just so stupid. Okay, so here is. Every uh, every homosexual knows this. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Would you like to have a drink? Sounds straight to me. And is straight. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Uh, do you want to go have a drink? Gay. <laughs> <laughs> what is gay voice? I mean, we all, I don't, we all no, have I'm it. I'm fascinated by it. 
Cause yeah. Because now I know I have one. Like Same. I feel Because it's weird because when I go on stage, people I've had people be like, I didn't know you were gay. I've actually had people be like, come up to me afterwards and say, um, I didn't even have a problem that you were gay. Well, and I'm like, oh, thank you so much. Or they, they're, or they'll be like, you know, um, or when I do a straight voice, do a straight voice. Can you do a straight voice? Oh, it's Evan Williams, man. It's totally Evan Williams. I, it's Evan Williams, man. Oh, he's my, he's my best friend. It's so and uh, this is the straightest voice I can do, man. It's the straightest. This is That straightest, man. is uncanny. I, and I've had uh, Evan on this show. I, I've done coke. Uh, <laughs> everyone in my family is dead, man. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's great, man. I, I, I talked about al al alcoholic, man. Since you talk to someone, you just sponsor. So, <laughs> yeah. so That's his laugh. Weird. Yeah. I do a perfect Evan Williams and a perfect um, uh, uh, well, uh, Danny Danny Callis, who's a Chicago comic, and then Joe Mackey. I don't know if you know Joe Mackey. Mm -hmm. Joe Mackey's a uh, funny New York comic. But he always oh, talks just like this. And that's not even gay or straight. That's just Muppet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, he does a very strange way. I do a lot of impressions, actually. Mine's always just like, like, oh, there's nothing I hate more than bruh. Bruh. Oh. Bruh. Oh. But we're, bruh is girl for us. I know. It is. I girled somebody last night, and I had to apologize. So I was like, they, I forget what they asked me, and I was like, girl. And they were like, what? I'm like, I just girled you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Netflix is a joke. And um, it Day was- Day 685. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Like, yeah, bruh is girl. Girl is bruh. Bruh is girl. That should be on a shirt. <laughs> Totally should. Um, but it is Pride season coming up. Yeah. Are you excited? Uh, it's my birthday, June 28th. So Happy my mother birthday. was really that, going for Gemini? it. Gemini? It's cancer? cancer. I'm, I don't... Their astrology is not real. I know you can't say that in LA because people, it's, this city has lost their goddamn marbles. But the moon and the rising and the stars. The moon and the rising stars. The stars don't rise. They stay still. The but I manifested all the, day. The earth spins. So it appears that they rise. You would think the Egyptians taught us Solar this. flares. Solar flares. Solar flares. <laughs> yeah, radiation and gas. No, shut up. Everyone using their What's sign. the difference between LA gays and New York gays? Astrology, apparently. Well, um, LA gays are talking about their brands. Everyone has a branding. Uh -huh. They're all branding. Um, astrology. Uh, and New York gays are, get out of my way! So that's about it. And theater. Theater. We love, they love theater, like, so much. What is it about musical what? theater that can be the world's greatest thing you've ever seen? And the most destructive and force <laughs> in nature? Oh my God! You want to piss off a New York gay? Go wicked! Eh. I mean, wicked. Oh. Wicked is great, but I here's is the, it? it uh, you come after my stars and moons. Well, I'm gonna come after your. I alphabet. will say a year ago, Nick and I, a couple years ago, Nick and I went to go see Wicked. We thought we should go. We should go see Wicked and the Alphabet. Now Nick is an opera trained trained opera singer, and so am I. So uh -huh. we're very tuned into. Now we're on Broadway. Yeah. And her first note, Nick just grabs my hand because it, she. She missed all of her cues, you know, and no good deed goes unpunished. You lost okay, me. okay, she she sings this song now. There's an air vent underneath her, so she, it's kind of like creating it. Well, she missed it, and so she tried stepping back into it, and then it was just like they, they chaos, were, chaos, and then and you could tell the tourists were like wow, like you could tell something was wrong. But Nick and I were having a full blown panic attack. <laughs> Because it was just, I couldn't believe it was happening. And everyone was just so, like, this cast, I saw it recently with my husband, and that was that one was really good. But the cast that we saw, they were, like, the 5 p.m. shift at Staples. Like, we just got to get out of here. I'm going to give you bare minimum. Punch in, clock punch out. In, punch yes. out. But there is something embarrassing about, like, like, because musical theater and singing and dancing is so difficult and wonderful when it when the right combination comes. It's similar to stand up comedy. Yeah. It's either the greatest thing in the world or you want to, your skin to peel off. And so, you know, it's the same thing. Like, you see like adults doing like Anastasia, the musical on tour, but they're in like Ohio and they're grown adults singing like, Perry holds the key to your heart. And you're like, the sadness. <laughs> it just is, it, everyone feels it. Everyone feels it. It's Everyone, the pure sadness. Sadness because there's just adults pretending. Yes, it's and like Disney. It is. 
And now there's a new sound to the Broadway voice, and I don't know if it came from Book of Mormon or... Um, you, what do you mean? Well, it's very... You know in Wicked, like, Nessa, I've got something to confess. Uh, that kind of, like, nasally okay, voice. Okay, okay. This is the new voice in Broadway. It's no longer like, la. It's more like, well, oh, I yeah. Oh, I hate go. it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> One day you'll find me. And you're like, oh, get the fuck out yeah. of here, Leah Michelle. Just shut up. Oh, God. I saw Funny Girl twice. I saw it with, uh, what's her name? Leah uh, Michelle. No, well, yes, but oh, the first uh, time with uh, Bernie, uh, Bernie, Bernie Fieldman? Beanie, Beanie Feldman. Beanie, Beanie Feldman. Beanie. 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 I left. I left Bernie. before the intermission with Beanie. Because it was just awful. The irony. I actually liked her take as an actress on on the the show because she was giving something different. She wasn't trying to do Streisand, and she was, you know, playing a kind of a like a kooky yeah. character, like which, a weird girl, know, right? And so, but then when you sing and you're singing a song called "I Am the Greatest Star," and the point of the song is supposed to be that her voice is because she's trying to make it in show business, yeah. and her voice is supposed to be so great that everyone's like, "Oh my God, you are forget the dancing girl, Miss, you're a fucking star." When you can't hit the note on Broadway. Oh. Uh, and I, I I, got up and I walked out. How do they get these jobs? Money? Just she's like- She's famous and she's a good actress. I thought she was great in the impeachment. What was yeah. it with the, she played Monica Lewinsky? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She was fantastic. I think she's a great actress, but I just, the singing. I'm the greatest star, I am by far, uh, but no one knows it. Is that the and, one? That's yes. the song? I knew that and one. everyone has Streisand in their ear. So it's oh my just, God. I don't know. And then I saw Leah Michelle, and I know she's racist and she can't read, but like she, <laughs> she did deliver. So it was a weird, it was a weird thing to like Beanie better and absolutely hate Leah Michelle, but Leah yeah. Michelle delivered. I mean, Leah Michelle did give us American Horror Story Delicate on the red carpet at the Met Gala. Did you see that? She was just like, I'm with child. Whoa. And it was, is she pregnant? Is she? Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't, I have been so off. Can I tell you I've been off she social take, media? Well, yeah, she take when she takes her shirt off and looks at her baby bump in the in the mirror, you just see little like fingers like <laughs> scraping, trying to get out. Yeah. Delicate. Leah Michelle. She had the buckle fat removal. Everyone goes to her. I watch these like plastic surgeons on YouTube, like sort of honing in on like trends of plastic surgery, and they go into buckle fat removal and they just show her to like the most extreme face. And then I saw her picture the other day. I'm like, she looks normal. She looks fine. Yeah. I mean, she's she is what she is. Um, but let's get into some pride because pride is here. Uh, we have not, I, I, I will list the 20, this is the 25 essential LGBTQ plus we'll pride songs. We'll do. Wow. Not we'll your do, producer being like, will you two shut the fuck up? No, we're not going to do like, <laughs> just, can you guys shut the fuck up? <laughs> the fact that he had to interrupt you to be like, is it our gay voice? Is that what it is? <laughs> He's like, look, you guys can't be too much. You can't have too much pride. Post I know Malone this was here. Meanwhile, we haven't gotten through a single topic without breaking into conversation. But he was so worried that our faggotry was going to overtake yes, this place. He, as it he, should. He came in. He's got somewhere to be. He's got trade. Like, yeah, he's got somewhere he's got trade. to go that he literally was like, guys, just pick 10. Just pick 10. We have 10. Okay. See, on Donna Summer. Yeah, looks, we're getting mansplained. Looks like Lee Michelle's child. This but... is actually Monet Exchange. So, <laughs> this is, we have Donna Summer, I Feel Love. Uh, I lo I, anything Donna Summer does, I love. I am too. I love her. An underrated voice. Oh. I mean, this is quintessential disco, like... Hurry, keep it along. We can only do 10. Move it. Go. Hurry, next. quit. Lee, you're the one who wanted to fix this. Okay. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm teasing. I know, uh, I know. We have Village People, YMCA. Sure. Ruined. Well, because. It's for Trump. He ruined it. Oh, he he did he did. Yes, remember when he was coming? He was coming out to do his fucking bullshit, and he's he's sick, to the like, YMCA. Yes, and like you have all these like crazy MAGA conservative people being like YMCA, and I'm like, do they know? They do. They do. They're in drag as well. Oh, <sighs> YMCA. We have Sylvester. You make me feel right, mighty real. Absolutely. Look at that shirt. I know. I love that shirt. I do too. <clears throat> Such style. What a great song. Love, like, oh, just the, every time I hear that, like, intro, just, oh, I want to do cocaine in the 70s. I've never done cocaine. Not now. No. You can't do it now. But, like, back then, like, well, I, like, I for, feel like. For six minutes to have a conversation about, like, what was that in um, Boogie Nights where, like, yes. like, you're my mother. 
her. Yeah. Can you I be am. my mom? I'll Can you? Be your mom. <laughs> I was like, oh. I, I'm already like an, a hair away from that sober. There's no way I can do cocaine. I would Are try. Are you my mom, Mateo? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mateo, will you be my mom? Only if I can be your <laughs> British mother. Oh, Lady Whistle Down, we meet again. Hip, 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 hip. Do you just read her? Oh my God, Bridgerton season three. I, I only saw one episode of Bridgerton. Oh, get into it. It's gonna be. It's going to be salacious. Um, we have Queen. Queen. Don't, Queen, don't stop me now. So good. I mean, that outfit don't too. Stop There's, me now. Having we'll a good, good time. time. Mm-hmm. A and don't mm-hmm. stop me now. <laughs> and that was it. Diana Ross, I'm coming out. I- I'm going to say something. Well, I, okay, I know what you're going to say. What am I going to say? It, at Pride, and this happened to me once in New York. It was mm-hmm. packed, gay bar, blah, blah, blah. They started playing Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. Blasphemy. No, you would have thought that Jesus came back himself to buy everyone drinks. They reacted unwell. It was so, ah, like, we couldn't yeah. handle it. it Oprah's was like, ding, favorite ding, things. Ding, 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 ding. I mean, hair ripping out. So um, this song doesn't bring that, even though the title of it would imply that yeah. it does. I'm the same way, because I'm just kind of like, every, every time I hear it, I'm like, Ugh. It's a little bit of an eye roller, because it's been used in other shit, It's too. been used, yeah. Also, she was mean to Patti LaBelle for a little bit, and I'm I'm a Patti LaBelle stan, so I don't... They had a feud? Mm-hmm. Ryan Murphy, take notes. That's what mm-hmm. I want. Well, Diana they, you know, Ross versus Patti LaBelle, feud. Patti said that they've that's all fine now, but they, they did for, like, years. They did for years. Patti and the LaBelles would buy outfits, and Diana Ross would go buy the exact same outfits and perform first, so that when Patti came out, they looked like they copied them. Bitch! Wow. Yeah. I that, think she was probably jealous. Patty can sing way better. Well, yeah. But also, like, Diana Ross is like, there can be only one Supreme! <laughs> God. Uh, we have Elton John, Elton's song. Is that the Elton's song? I don't know Elton's song. I'm thinking song. of your song. That's what it is. Is that what that, it is? That was a straight person writing this article. Homophobic. And you will be everybody. Yeah. This is a song. Is it called and Elton's it's song? Quiet, simple, it's, but. It's, it's him exploring his homosexuality. Come here. Oh, so I'm thinking of a different, a different song. song. Yeah. Okay, now I have that song stuck in my head. Oh, this is good. I'm gay. <laughs> uh, is that Barbara Streisand and Yentl? Probably. Oh, yeah. This Barbara is Streisand and him Yentl. Him getting bullied at Hogwarts. <laughs> Do you get it? It does look like Barbara Streisand and Yentl. Just a cross-dressing child. I want to study the Torah. They don't. (sighs) Just fags smoking fags. (laughs) One of my favorite, I love Alan Carr. He's one of my favorite comics of all time. My favorite bit of his, he's like, I'll have a kick about the bull. I'll kick about my brother at the park. And my dad was going to kick the boy, you puff. You hear something enough times. So good. Oh yeah, Weather Girls. It's that's, rain, I mean, this one. Hallelujah. I mean, if you Great A plus that comes on, <clears> they give you the weather report. Yes, mm. I feel like every kid who is questioning a lot of. Uh, I, I get parents now who ask me. They're like, "Well, yeah, I think my son or daughter is gay, and how how do you know?" And I'm like, "Well, you kind of have to ask them." But here's a tip for all you listeners: if you want to know if your kid is gay, ask them. If they had a superpower, what would it be? And if they say to control the weather, they're gay. That for I, sure. Uh, Every time I child. hear that thunderclap in this song, I'm like, ooh, bitch. Like, building you, fabric in the wind. My favorite storm quote yes. of all time. <clears throat> it's so dramatic. It's two parts. They're fighting Nimrod. And then Cyclops is like, what can we do? His powers are impervious to our weapons. He has not yet felt the force of the elements. I and mean, then the music. Dun, 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 yes. dun. And then she goes, from the ends of the earth, send limitless cold yes. upon him. Yes, just I, bitch. My yes. heart grew three times. It's that. always like Cyclops will be like, you know, and then Jean Grey's like, oh, Scott. Yeah. And then Storm is just like, winds of the west of the... <laughs> and you're like, Bitch. By the goddess of Africa, I summon the... Storm, we ask the you to open the window. The storm is upon us! Yes. Oh, bitch. Storm, we said, get the milk. <laughs> just get the milk. The monsoons of India will drown you all! What? B- lady, like, calm down. We're on a bus. <laughs> My favorite, okay, this is one of my favorite things ever. 
Storm has a quote where she's talking to Rogue. And she goes, I admire your spirit, Rogue. But unlike you, I must keep my emotions in check, lest my powers rage out of control. So one time, years ago, about 15 years ago, I was in Chicago, where I grew up, and there was a huge thunderstorm. And I hear like a big crack of thunder. And uh, within a second, I get a text from my cousin Brian going, Lest my powers rage out of control. <laughs> I will text that to you. I would just love it. Randomly. I would love it. God. I would love it. Storm is a is is she's my ultimate weather girl. Same. Uh, a little respect by erasure. Sure. I get that. A little respect. Da, 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 da. Madonna, Madonna Vogue. Vogue, of course. Come on now. What if Madonna's Vogue was not on here? Like, I'd be like, what? If, if Madonna, I mean, if Cher, Madonna, you know, Beyonce, Mariah, Whitney, I mean, they, they, these are the these are what we want. These I mean, are the dolls. George Michael, underrated Ugh. singer. He's an amazing singer. Amazing singer. Truly amazing. I'm so sad. I love Joan I Rivers' joke. So, she goes, like, I went to George Michael's wedding. They held it where they met in the men's room at Hyde Park. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Just rough trade bathroom stall. He was like, hot. The hottest video too, Freedom 90. And I always sing this like whenever I do the comedy jam, the goddamn comedy jam with Josh. Adam oh, Myers. where Josh says, sing anything. And then the day you get there, he's like, you have to sing this song. You have to sing yes, this Josh. song. And then he'll just like power over everyone and sing. It's like the Josh Adam Myers show. And you're like, okay, well, I guess we're here. Yeah, that one. <laughs> But every now and but they've then, they've been nice to me. They've given me like eighteen. Yeah, I've done like a million of the goddamn comedy. They're jams. they're fun. I've done I've done many as well. Um, I'm let me show you. I did one time. He Josh was like, I want you to sing Mariah Carey's Emotions, mm -hmm. and I was like, Got it. And I with whistle tone. Yes, and so I'm I still have it saved. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, sorry. Um. <laughs> When you when you have nudes and then you're like, oh, I hope the camera didn't catch it. Okay, so <laughs> did it catch it? I want to see the nudes. It was not my. You know. Okay, All right, the, this is me singing Mariah Carey's uh, uh, at the goddamn comedy jam. Oh, such a good night. I mean, you can hit the whistle notes. I came out. No, like, they're gone. They're like pretty much gone now. Well, so are Mariah's. So no, so she, I've heard, okay. I was next to her in an elevator for an MTV show where you meet your like I, icons or whatever. So it was me and like five other people in the elevator. You can still see this on YouTube. And uh, there was, uh, of course, uh, this white woman was crying the whole time. But um, Mariah did a whistle tone in the elevator with us. Did everyone explode? I did. Yeah. But there, they weren't real stands. I was because I was on her bad. <laughs> I was on her good side. So she couldn't look at me. So she only like <laughs> leaned down. But I Which, did. By the way, can I just call this out? You made me move yes. seats. Yes. You were like, honey, you're sitting. Over there, I'm sitting here. I was like, oh, like Stry's oh, hand. No Chick Fil A sauce. Like it was like <laughs> I've never been to Chick Fil A. Oh well, you're, I mean it's it's hateful, but but delicious. Mariah did a whistle note. Yes, and it was glorious that I got to hear Mariah in an Perry, elevator in an elevator this far away from me do a whistle tone. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Like that's that's like that's like a Coachella lineup. Like Mariah Carey whistle note in an elevator is performing at Coachella. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, this is so good. I'm glad you brought her up because Mariah, Kylie Minogue, Christina uh, Aguilera are divas that have performed at Pride, but divas are extremely expensive and hard to get since inflation is real. But here is a budget friendly superstar divas Pride lineup. Is that the Friday girl? <laughs> with celebrity impersonators. Celebrity impersonators. You can rent people who say they look like celebrities, and I'm obsessed. First, okay, the biggest problem here is not that she doesn't look like J-Lo, but this But you dress, got it. You got it. Yeah, because the dress, but the dress looks like the fabric they use for the tables at Rainforest Cafe. Yeah. And then This she... is Jessica Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> I want so badly to know what Mariah looks like. She doesn't know her. <laughs> what what if you showed this picture to Mariah Carey and she's like, oh yeah, that's <laughs> like she totally knew her doesn't doesn't know Jennifer Lopez. Oh yeah, I met her at a she was doing a whistle note in an elevator for this bitch. Oh, okay. Jennifer Lopez. Don't know her. 
I mean, oh my God, look. Okay, so uh, here. Better, better. Is this better? Is this Derek Barry? Like, I'm confused. That's better, though. It's, That's good. I mean, look, they're doing all the right things. Yes. It's over the shoulder, it's covered up, it's the hair. It's, uh, you know, better, better, yeah. better, better, better. Oh, God, what's happening below? Is that supposed to be Madonna? That looks more like Mariah. It looks like Mariah. I thought it was Mariah. <laughs> Mariah masquerading as Madonna? This is, but this like, I would pay more for than I would front seats at a Madonna concert. I would pay, I would max out my credit cards to have this thing show up. Oh, uh, to You're gonna, to, to whom? This, what? <laughs> f how bad do your cataracts have to be to have this walk in your house and it gaze be like, serve, Cunt. gag. <laughs> Gag. Yeah, we are gagging. I mean, what? I and mean, she has to wear her name on her shirt to remind you who she's supposed to be. Yeah. And yeah. herself. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh, by the way, I'm Madonna. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, ooh, it's a lot. I'll just wear the rock on my shirt and walk around and be like, money. Yeah. I yeah, mean, Hollywood and Vine, go down there after this. Oh, no, I could, hold out. on a second. Well, this is actually Mateo as Liza. I, just one <laughs> I just want to say, I'm so excited to be here on this Thank you, Liza. Show. Oh, thank you. I remember the first thing my father said to me. He said, Liza, call an ambulance. I was like, my friend Rob used to have that joke. It might have been SNL. That's not my own joke. Okay, a real quote that Liza said that I love. Is she, she was on Larry King years Please ago. Please say it's Storm. And she get, I, <laughs> By the winds of the Sahara, I summon the forces of nature my sister Lorna <laughs> can I tell you my favorite Liza story to tell yes. it's, it's made up it's just, I remember <gasps> one time and by the way the good thing about me is I don't need the drag I already look like Liza yeah I remember one time I woke up and it was snowing <laughs> and I said daddy it's snowing and he said oh there's an ice rink outside because so I wanted to be an ice skater until I saw Bye Bye Birdie so I go outside and I start to skate <laughs> And I realized, this. I said, Daddy, this ice is lumpy and screaming. He said, that's your sister, Lorna. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Not Lorna. Oh, this is a good Mariah. Well, <laughs> and he's back. Better. Honestly, work. I mean... Better. This is this is kind of impressive. Personally, this is I 2008 think, memoirs of an imperfect angel. Mariah. Yes, but there is a guy on TikTok who. Oh yeah. Do you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Stunning. Like he he will turn himself into Mariah Carey, and it is like uncanny. It's, my my new favorite thing I've seen drag performers doing Mariah Carey with the actual like Grammy performance behind them, uh, and then they stand and mimic everything yes, exactly I saw to that. the video. A yeah. plus because yes. you know Mariah is not really a perform. She's not like Patti LaBelle, Beyonce. No, yes. You know, even Whitney, even though Whitney was a singer, not a dancer, but Whitney was you know a Mariah presence. is always a little back, yeah. you just know, kind of just kind of little, you know. But she, in '95, she was able. She was more like you yeah, know, really. But she's back. never been like a like. No. Ka, 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 ka. She, yeah. she even says I like the recording studio. I like, but look, I've seen Mariah live 14 times. Wow, I've I know seen her we should once. we shouldn't be called lambs. We should be called enablers and. um <laughs> But I will say, I saw her once. I saw, like, the prime of Mariah Carey in 2013 at the uh -huh. Beacon Theater. And I don't know what was up with that night, but there wasn't, like, the trying to look pretty in the light. At one point, her shoe fell off. She took it. She threw it. She was Work. running around the stage. She was on. She was... that. Was, I felt very lucky to see that night because I felt like I saw the real Mariah Carey. The raw Mariah. Because yeah, I saw now her she's... Christmas concert. And it's good. She's uh, fun. She sings great. She looks great. But there, it's a little, she holds back a little bit. The but way now, that Streisand does. Well, now she's going to like Universal Studios and doing like glam after a ride. I saw that. Uh, who sent that to me? Nicole Byer sent that Probably. to me. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Just. But like, I could what get behind she... this Mariah. I yeah. could. Is there any more? Do we have? Oh, yes. We have. Oh, this is Beyonce. What? <laughs> yeah. When? I, pff, after the fire. <laughs> When was this Beyonce? And are those girls wearing X's on their... Or is that the picture? Yeah, I don't know who it's, these it's other the, three are. It's like the forward, backward arrow on, on a picture. Oh, I thought it was like when there's a hurricane, you're supposed to put tape on your window <laughs> Could so you that imagine? it doesn't break. Yeah. This, is, this is Destiny's Misfits from Florida with taped hurricane windows. 
Yeah, I don't. It's this so bizarre. This is very bad. Yeah. We also have Janet Jackson. Okay, you just put a hat on that said Rhythm Nation. <laughs> this is not Janet Jackson. <laughs> no. Me and Michelle. It Bateau. might be though. Like that could be her real name. We don't know. But this is not. This is not. She it. laughs in. The problem with Janet Jackson is every song she's always laughing in. Mm -hmm. So she'll be like, "Oh, for you, <laughs> you're always doing that." Like, who the fuck are you talking? I to? also love Janet Jackson. Frida, come here. Come here. Aww. I also love Janet Jackson when because now she's in this era where she'll just show up and she doesn't know why she's there and she'll just like quietly giggle <laughs> because everyone's like, oh my God, I can't believe she was on Drew Barrymore with like Ross Matthews Drew and they're Barrymore. all like losing their shit and she's just like. <laughs> I went on the Drew Barrymore show. She was very nice, yeah. very professional, very easy to work with. Did she with. massage her kneecaps? I, well, that's the thing is like, <laughs> she's getting like closer and closer now. At this point, like I'm afraid that the guest is going to sit there and they're like, where's Drew? And she comes out of their sweater. I mean, she's just, <laughs> are you going to wear their skin? Like at some, oh. That's there you go. Not, I wanted to see this reaction, the triggering. This is Barbara Streisand. Jim Bailey did it better, Barbara Streisand. This is like, first of all, we're, of all the Streisands we can pick, we've picked 1992 mm -hmm. Madison Square Garden, yeah. the back to Barbara concert. But this is also like that really shitty wax figure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. a real woman, allegedly. <laughs> But I mean, it's giving like it's Barbara. This... She does. I guess she does. If I were to pick any Streisand, pick the the sixties. Yeah, it's come very, on very now, strange. the glam Streisand. Well, look at this last picture. This is <sighs> this is hell. This is hell. This Kathy as bat. How dare you? This is AI. This is Rise of the Machines. I don't, this is offensive on so many levels. This is Bette Midler if she was a Yankee candle on fire in a Cracker Barrel. I'm it looks sorry, like, Frida. I'm it looks so like sorry, Barbara Frida. Cook. Okay. She's been great. It looks like Barbara Cook decided to go as Bette for Halloween. Do you know yeah. Barbara Cook? I do now. Will you look up Barbara <laughs> Cook real quick? She was a famous Broadway singer. She had, I wanted high school. Cream. I know that song. Oh there my is. god, it's, good old Barbara Cook. It's Barbara Cook, who I love Barbara Cook. It's Barbara Cook as Bette Midler. Oh, oh, she passed away. Of course I pull up. She that was so Wendy Williams cream. of me. I'm like, she passed away? Oh. First of all. <laughs> oh, Wendy. She gave us such good TV. I, mean, God, so I miss good. old Wendy. Oh, so she's good. So I know I tried watching that documentary and I couldn't. I couldn't. It was Julio too Torres, who, if you don't know, was one of the funniest comics ever, had a mm -hmm. great joke. I don't know if it, he ever did it on stage, but he would tell me, he's like, I just love that, like, Wendy Williams is, it says Oscar updates behind her. And she's like, the problem when people come over to your home. Yeah. Like, she's like, <laughs> she's just, <laughs> Bette Miller regrets not suing Lindsay Lohan for leaving Bet after the pilot. Well, speaking what of Bet, What are you to a 14-year-old? Isn't this, yes, this is a new story coming out of Bette Midler in uh, a candle factory. This is the actual real Bette Midler. She regrets not suing Lindsay Lohan for leaving Bet. Was she kidding? She pilot. must be kidding. No. She, Come on. Let's read. Let, I'll read a little bit By of the, the way, story. Lindsay so Lohan. She says, uh, Bette Midler admits that her series bet was a huge mistake and so was not suing her co-star, Lindsay Lohan, for leaving it early. During an appearance on David Duchovny's Fail Better podcast Tuesday, Midler reflected on her short-lived stint as a sitcom star, which she candidly confessed ending up being a big flop. I did a television show. Does it get any more generic than that? The Hocus Pocus star 78 joked, a big, big, big mistake. Could you, oh, I loved the shade in that. She was like, oh, I did a TV, I did a TV show. How embarrassing. The Hocus Pocus star. Like out of her well, whole they filmography. Did it, they did it all the time. Like Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan, they always say Mean Girl star. I'm like that was yeah. 20 some years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have to say real quick, one, Bet looks amazing. Yes, she I does. I love Bet. whatever. Bet can do no wrong. Number two, Lindsay Lohan. I am so proud of her. Me too. She's never looked better. She's acting she great. She looks so good. She's, she's, she's booking gigs. She's in Dubai. Gig. I think, Lindsay, you are. <clears throat> she watches I've, this. She listens. Because I've made some disparaging jokes about Lindsay in the past. <laughs> I was I've openly <laughs> apologized for them too. I rarely apologize. I've apologized. But I do have funny jokes because she, she, the joke I had, she was trying 
for a very long time before they casted uh, Little Mermaid. She was trying to put on Instagram that she'd be a great Little Mermaid, you know, the red hair and stuff. But it was at that time in Lindsay's life. And so I, my only joke was, I said, they, Lindsay Lohan's trying to, to push herself to be Little Mermaid. I didn't know mermaids could smoke underwater. And you're going to be under the sea. By the time she gets to Ursula, Ursula's going to be like, you can keep oh, the voice. When, when she transforms into a human, she wouldn't make it to the surface. She'd die. She can't hold her breath that long. But all that being said, I apologize. Yeah. That was my well, joke. But Lindsay is A+. plus. I've never been happier I'm for so her. I'm so excited for and her. And she looks unbelievable. Yeah, she looks great. Your Mariah story in an elevator where she sang or did the whistle tone, mine was actually Lindsay Lohan put a cigarette out on my arm in an elevator. That's better than Mariah. Yeah. <laughs> if Lindsay Lohan no. slapped me and pissed in my eye, I would be like, I can die now. Mateo? She's here. Lindsay, come on out. <laughs> did someone say piss? <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, when did you turn into Gollum? Um, but more to the story, <laughs> Bette Midler, she says that she reflected on the series. Um, yeah, I don't even remember this show. No. But there's young Lindsay Lohan, and she said, uh, despite her name being on the project, Midler said she was kicked to the curb and not allowed to take charge of the series. Okay, sure. However, the first Wives Club star said she believes it would have worked had it not been for a few astonishing factors like Lindsay Lohan's departure after the pilot episode. Lindsay was cast as my daughter. Well, after the pilot, Lindsay Lohan decided she didn't want to do it or she had other fish to fry. So Lindsay Lohan left the building. I said, well, what do you want to do? And the studio didn't help me. She said it was extremely chaotic. Bet, bet, you've got this. You're okay. I, you know, bet. The I'm problem be... isn't the child leaving the show. That's right. I, I'm on <laughs> Lindsay's side. Also, Same. bet. Relax, okay? Relax, Just bad. relax. Yeah, so... Uh, they, what, do they go to prom together? What yeah, are no, photos? exactly. Did you really care about this child? No. Lindsay was so cute. She looks great. I still cry at the parent trap. When she see, Not when she meets her father, when she meets her mother for the first time. I've never seen it. What? I know. It's a, it's such a good plane movie, I know. too. No, I mean, it is a good plane oh, movie. Oh, my God. Next time you fly... Put on the parent trap. Okay, I will. And I want an immediate full, text full, from okay, you. I will. Just text me throughout. I will. It's good. And it's not, I'm not even saying it like, oh, it's like, a, it's a genuinely good movie. I will watch a it. A million plot holes. Look, I mean, look at her. She looks amazing. Yeah, she looks She's a kid now. I saw that Irish movie, like Wish or whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. She was great. It's just fun. She's a great comedic actress. And it's just great to see her. Although it was her hair AI'd in this. What's going on? Totally. I think, I mean, I watched the the Christmas movie where she, like, was, like, the snow so overboard. And she's supportive of her family. She always has Allie and things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she's very good. Yeah. Um, okay, well, moving along. Yeah, but grow up. Get, get ready for intimacy. Are you ready? Let's get a little sexy here. Paris Olympics lifts the intimacy ban for athletes and is stocking up on 300,000 condoms. Okay, a question. Yes, answer. I didn't realize there was an intimacy ban. What does that mean? You can't... Well, they're saying that the the hottest people in the world who yeah. come together in the most romantic city are not allowed to fuck. They put it on there because of COVID in the 2020 Olympics. Mm. And they said... They, they, they were like, people can't get together. They, you know... COVID, all that kind of shit. We don't want like people being banned, you know, testing positive, and then they have to go home because they've been close to another person. So that's been lifted. So get your... <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's going to uh, be uh, 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 insane. Yes, absolutely. Everyone, everyone. We're going to have Olympic babies. We're going to have <laughs> Olympic babies. Uh, so, Imagine. But it's... also, why just 300,000? 300, 300,000 condoms will be at the Paris Olympics. And in How many contestants are there? Not that many. So, I, mean, I was like, well, we just, we assume that they're going to fuck a lot. Yeah, yeah. And then where is that going to end up? The oceans. It's it, true. It, <laughs> the ocean. Poor Ursula is going to be choking on rubbers. Maybe that, my Ursula. That'll get rid of her. My Ursula don't believe in uh, <laughs> con con contraception. because My we, Ursula lays eggs, and after they hatch, she dies. Like a true octopus, which does. <laughs> <laughs> in an interview about the upcoming games, which will be held in the French capital from July 26th to August 11th. Yes, preparing uh, for 300,000 <laughs> condoms. They're preparing for 14,250 residents and are aiming to have 300,000 condoms for the athletes. So, yeah, due, due to COVID, 
uh, 19 pandemic, they had to like say no intimacy, all that shit. That's um, wild. But on. <sighs> Hmm. <laughs> I'm just trying to think here. Do we think that athletes use condoms? Are we still trying to gaslight ourselves? If, if anyone it knows how to take a risk, it's an athlete. It's an athlete. Yeah. It's a pole jumper. If anyone's going to be the best at pulling out, it's going to be an athlete. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows how to time themselves better than someone who has to jump over a 50 foot pole yeah. and no one just throw their legs over? Exactly. Who are the horniest athletes, do you think? Soccer players. Yeah. The running around all day and your balls just being like, can we do something about this? Or wrestlers? What about the, like, they have to, like, tap mm. out? They don't seem horny to me. As gay as it is. It, it is, is gay. gay. It's gay. But I've seen videos. Gay is a picnic bat. But I, I, it, to me, they don't, to me, like, a, a the horniest strikes me as, I don't know, soccer players. It's the mm -hmm. haircuts, I think. Mm -hmm. You can just tell. You can tell by a man how horny he is by his haircut and cologne. Fair. Totally agree. 100% period. When you walk by a guy and you're like, <laughs> gay. horny. No, okay. Okay. Or, or horny. <laughs> I just had a, an experience that I haven't had, I don't think ever. I since I was because I was balding mm -hmm. and I had all my hair was like gone. I would go to a specific barber to do my hair, like cut over here. You know, he would like help me hide it and quaff it and stuff. So I would never just I never understood the concept of like a guy going to like a random barber shop and getting his hair done. So when I was in Cologne, Germany, I needed a haircut and I went to like this Lebanese barber shop and I just felt like such a guy. Like I walked in, I was like, I need a haircut. This like hot Lebanese dude is like, y'all, you can't sit down. And then just like cutting my hair and I just had the freedom for him to cut my hair. And I was like, wow, I paid all that money for this moment. From this moment. Because the haircut was bad and the it guy was, was great. Okay. Guy, no, it was, I was but, thinking it was a great moment that I could just sit like a normal person and get right. my haircut and not worry. Oh, don't touch this or that. I had, I had a Uber driver the, yesterday and he was like, I love your voice. And I was like, thanks. He goes, you're very pronounced. It's so almost... you talk to your Uber driver. He... That's an L.A. thing. <laughs> you don't? Not once. <laughs> you're, you're, the city's made you hard, Mateo. They don't want to talk to us either. Really? It's a mutual I not get in the speaking... car and I'm like, hi, no. how are you? <laughs> Our eyes don't even make eye contact in the rearview mirror. <laughs> oh, this one was good looking. But you get in L.A. and before the door closes, they're ready to have brunch. Yeah. We had eggs Benedict afterwards. Oh, uh, it was very, very sweet. I gave him five stars. He was like, very nice meeting you. We had like a whole discussion. He's from Albania. I was like, just like Dua Lipa. Like had a whole like thing. We exchanged numbers. No, my We're headphones friends. go on. <laughs> I wear eight headphones just to send a message. See, I get that. But here, but about LA, like I will have headphones in walking Frida and I'll be walking down the street and I will have headphones in and people are like, and I'm like, I can't hear you. New Yorkers really I'm like, don't talk to me. Such a difference. Now, okay, this story. Yes. My cousin sent this to me because my, just, my cousin Megan did this. Yes. Wait, what? Yeah. That's his cousin? No, my cousin Megan has done this before. What? Okay. Yes. I pulled this story because you've been traveling all over yeah. the world. Um, and this woman, actually, my friend Kelsey <laughs> sent me this. And it says, plane passenger climbs into an overhead bin and takes a nap. And she's not the first. Your cousin has done this. Yes. So uh, how? So it was on a bus, but same concept, right? Because they had the, <laughs> you know, like, my, first of all, I have 31 first cousins. Mm -hmm. So when my uncle Michael got married, um, we had to charter a bus to go to the wedding dinner or whatever yeah, it's called. Yeah. And so on the bus, it was um, about 40 some members of my family and four members of his wife's family. So at the end, because my family's unwell, my cousin Megan thought it'd be really, we had a peanut fight too. We were throwing peanuts at each other. My cousin Megan thought it'd be fun to get in the overhead bin and crawl all the way through. And yeah, so my cousin, Meg, we, my my cousins and I are on a text thread together called the Wolf Pack, and they sent this yesterday because my cousin Megan did exactly this. I feel like a Megan would do that. She, yeah, my cousin Megan. Who, Does she get in trouble or no? No, she she would fight you. My cousin Megan's tough. She's very tough. But did she get caught and they were like, get out of there? Or uh, we was... caught her and pulled her out. We might have also been drunk. How my, old? How old are you? Guys? I was 21. Oh, wow. So, yeah. She was 22 then. I mean, but that's fun. But this... On a plane? On a plane, honestly, with the amount I... For look at her face, no guilt whatsoever. So, no, that's actually uh, a Bette Midler it's, impersonator. It's... <laughs> that's her. There she is. She's going to her next gig. I mean, 
This is what blows my mind. So this is a Southwest Airlines, which I'm like, ugh. But the, also, the indignity on Southwest Airlines, by the way, to just like like cattle run in and pick your seat. Pick your seat. It's I don't understand it. And they're just like, come fly with us. Want to get away? I do want to get away, I, but I need order. So this woman, Southwest Airlines passenger, uh, f- what? <laughs> flummoxed fellow flyers after she was filmed napping in the plane's overhead bin. As seen in a video with 5.1 million views on TikTok, Southwest is wild and reads the caption, uh, which shows the unnamed person nonchalantly lying lengthwise in the overhead locker as if preparing for cryogenic sleep. How'd she get up there without anyone I seeing want her? to know. I want to know. Because this woman clearly is of a certain age. Right. I'm pretty sure she can barely put a bag up there on her own, let alone lift her body into the uh, space, the overhead compartment. I mean, that's the thing is like, uh, what what's going on with the, because the, the flight attendants have it hard enough. Right. So now they but have to But did no one like, see this? Like, I feel like of all the videos of people like getting tased in the neck and kicked and like bare feet on the goddamn screens and just acting like assholes on planes, duct taped to their seats. But we allow this woman, you know what? It's, I don't know, maybe it's a Mother's Day treat. Who knows? (laughs) I don't know. They were like, you know what? She's going home for Mother's Day and just let her live. I have so many questions. And also, did they pull her out? Were they like, ma'am? You can't do this. I and- wish there was a button that just ejects her into the air. Like, <laughs> no. Just, no, 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 no. Ah! Because Not sometimes e- people deserve that on planes. They act like such children. Assholes. No. Have you? What's the worst? Have you had like bad experiences on the on planes or just seen bad behavior? Well, besides I, I Megan, was sitting, I was besides my cousin <laughs> Megan. I was sitting on a plane. We were flying from uh, Dublin to Italy, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting with my friend Francesco to Carlo. We're sitting in the fourth row, and we're next to each other. We're tired. We've done shows. I don't know. And a woman walks on the plane. Now, most of the plane has boarded. Mm-hmm. She walks on the plane before she even makes it past seat one. In a full panic, turns to the flight attendant and goes, "Is this 16?" What does that mean? She thought that number one seat was just oh, her seat. seat. She 16? thought her seat was there. And then Francesco's like, how does she think the plane works? 87, 4, 52. She, I mean, like it it's was, bingo? It, and I'm like, how did she make it here? Yeah. If she went on a plane where it's ordered in a row, yeah. she gets up to the first seat. And yeah. she, is this 16? This- and then the flight attendant goes, six? Because she's trying to give her the benefit like, of the doubt that like, she said the yeah, stupidest yeah. thing in the world. She goes, 16. She goes, no, this is one. You mentally ill person who is traveling the world in public. (sighs) Americans, we're something else. Yeah. I've actually corrected children on a plane, which is oh. kind of epic. Yeah. How and, and Bob the Drag Queen has a joke about this, but how tr- how true is it that how insulting is it when you walk by a child in first class? Oh, degrading. Degrading. And they're on like all of the the most expensive screens, laptops. They have. They look like a streamer. Yeah, yeah. They're just on there with a million things. You walk by a child in first class and you're like, back to the shadows I go. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I have to go sit in the toilet. Enjoy your flight, Junior. Yeah. Oh, you want a charcuterie (laughs) board? Perfect, we'll get you one. Oh, you're allergic to boards? Perfect, we'll fix that for you. God, fucking ass. Like in The Simpsons, a fireplace comes out for him to roast his marshmallows. Yeah, yeah. Woman refuses to move up in line until she's at the front. Yes. And their internet is mildly infuriated. I don't understand. She well, refuses to move up in line. Wait for it. This woman got on a plane and said, is this 16? And uh, no, no. This is, so this woman, I love that the 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 article starts with, when you look up anxiety in the dictionary, you'll likely see a photo of the airport. Between checking your bags, being fondled by TSA, uh, And trying to make it to your flight on time, there's no end to the anxiety that awaits at the airport. But the worst part are the lines. So this woman was in line for a queue or like, you know, baggage claim. Then she got out of the line and said she does not want to move with the line until it's her turn to where she was standing. You with me? I'm more mad about the fringe purse. Fair. <laughs> this tells me everything I need to know about this woman. This is bootleg Cowboy Carter merch. It, it, my question is, wh- where did it... Has this always been happening, or is the internet showing that people are... Insane. 
insane. Yes. So this unnamed woman caught a lot of flack. Uh, by her antics were captured by a spectator. However, she was ent entirely wrong. Uh, so this was on Reddit. Posted the photo. Is there a video? Can we see the video? Yeah, I think we can. So this is her. Not this guy. Until the line moves yeah. all the way forward to move. People confronted her about it. She said, it's the same if I move now or later. And all I got to say about this is hold up, let her cook, because I kind of love this. <laughs> like, I, just look at her. She's just standing there. She's like, no, nah, I don't. This man has never been to the airport. Full bush. <laughs> Full bush. <laughs> Full bush. F full? Full. Just overgrown. <gasps> yeah. Overgrown. Yeah. When you take your pants down, you hear, yeah. You turn the lights on and they all scurry. Two, two red dots. Mm -hmm. Two eyes mm -hmm. staring back at you. Just Leah Michelle. It's honestly, it's kind of crazy because like this girl, like let her fucking cook because also because and then. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And then they go, they put their head on their bed and they're like, I did I that. Created I content. created magic. You know what? I'm sponsored now. I have brands. I am going to be on Bette Midler's new pilot. Then like she'll sue you. <laughs> Bet will sue you. If we've learned anything from this podcast today, Bette Midler will sue she'll you. She'll sue the fuck out of you. Exactly. So yeah, this woman is just like entitled. She doesn't have to stand in line with the rest of the peasants. She will wait her turn. So, on that note, on that note, that is it. You you did I it. Did it. We did, did it. Just same podcast. Did you have fun? I truly had a blast. It was way fun. I I'm, hope your audience doesn't hate me because they do. We, they but, do hate you. They hate you so much. I have a lot of anxiety as of late. Why would they hate you? I don't know. They love I, I'm you. I'm fear based, and I think everyone hates me. No, but... they're going to be like, "Oh my God, Mateo Lane's on the show." Yeah, they oh. love you. Are you kidding me? And please tell everybody like where you're going. Like where? Yeah, what? Where... I'm going to go. Yeah, back on Broadway. Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing Liza at the Palace. Um, I... Liza's Palace. Is that what she said? Liza at the Palace? It's a mom of fun. Um, I am on tour. Yes, the Can't Stop Talking tour. We just released dates, so if you want to come to that, please come and MateoLaneComedy.com for tickets, or you can see my podcast. I never liked you with Nick Smith. Available yes. everywhere you get podcasts, mostly YouTube because that's where we chat with each other. Um, that's about it. Yes. Well, I'm so glad you were here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Seriously. And when I get to New York, we gotta hang. Yes. How long are you in town for? Till, I like, go the home tomorrow. You night. go home tomorrow. So we'll we'll figure something we'll out. Figure it out. But have a blast. Okay. Enjoy your time here. Thank get you. some sun, and we will see you next time on the Just Saying podcast. Frida, Jesus, God, have a good one. We'll see you guys later. Ciao.